Hello folks. Well, this time we're going to deal with the ordinal data types. So these are the ones that are typically looking at discrete sets of values. This one will probably be pretty short and sweet, so I'll just get started here. Um, the ordinal types refer to anything where you've got a finite set of values that you want to treat as a named data type. So this might be subranges for things that are a finite set of values. So for instance, you might pick the, the characters from A to Z or the integers from you know, 20 to 50 or whatever it might be, anything where you can define a distinct start point and end point and the compiler is capable of telling whether a particular value falls in that range and the range has to be discrete. So you can't have uh, a subrange of real numbers, for instance, because there's still an infinite number of possible values between any two points. Um, the other set of ordinal types typically supported are enumerated sets, where you actually give a list of these are the values that make up this data type. So we'll consider those two. And the idea of having an ordinal type is that it, again, allows you to associate a type name with a particular set of values. Um, so you, this gives you better error checking. Um, it gives you better readability, right? If the user can see something that says uh, this is this range represents uh, percent, or this range represents valid speed limits, or this range represents valid days of the week, for instance, it's a more meaningful name than just simply being an integer. Um, or similarly, if you want to represent a set of characters as these are the vowels, right? That's more meaningful than um, just calling it a char. So we'll consider the subranges first. Again, I think I mentioned most of this, but the idea is as long as you've got a finite set of values within a range and there's a definite ordering of those values. So for instance, the integers if you specify the integers from 30 to 50, it's easy for the compiler to say, okay, well, 31's in that range, 77 isn't. Or if you're talking about characters, as long as you've got a clear ordering on the characters, say by their ASCII values, then you can say, is this particular character somewhere in that range or is it not? Um, quite often where you'll find the subrange is useful are cases where your language actually lets you specify parts of a string or parts of an array. So I want to capture the set of, or the characters in, or the, the positions in array from 7 through 30, right? Whatever syntax you use for doing that is often closely related to the syntax that you'd use for defining a subrange. So you'll find quite a few languages support this, but certainly not all of them. And the other type that we described there was this idea of an enumerated type, where we give an actual list of values, right? The idea of enums and something like C, where as a developer, you can say, okay, these particular values, this specific set of values is part of this set, is part of this data type, and anything else is not. So for instance, if we had a, a a data type that was to represent speed limits in the province. Right? There's only a finite number of these things that are actually in use. We don't have speed limits of 7 or 23 or things like that. So you might decide, okay, well, our speed limit data type will have the values you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, etc. And we'll come up with a range of the actual speed limits or a, a collection of the actual speed limits that are used in the province. And again, this gives you the benefit of being able to say, well, if somebody tries to use a 23 as a speed limit, we say, that's ah, not valid. That's not one of these values. And it's more meaningful from the point of view of the programmer in terms of readability. If I declare a variable to be of type speed limit, it's an awful lot clearer to me that that's what it's being used for than if I just declare it as an int. In terms of implementation, uh, and support for this. You know, languages might not support this at all. Uh, they might actually just support it through a set data type if that's included in the language. Um, you might be limited in the kind of data types that you can use for this. So for CE numbers are a good example of that, where the only things you can put in your enumerated types 
are integers or characters. All right, it's, it's pretty much just the the values that are or the data types that have an underlying integer representation, really. Um, or possibly, if it's a little bit more relaxed than that, you might specify, well, I can create an enumerated type of any existing data type, but all of the values within it have to be of the same type, or possibly of compatible types. Uh, let's see, you might also go through and associate different names with specific values in your enumerated data type. So again, this is something that um, C's enums do where you can create your enumerated type and say, my enumerated type is going to represent the weekdays. It's going to assign the value zero with the name Sunday or the identifier Sunday and the value one with the name Monday. Again, it makes it more readable, makes it clearer to the user. Uh, you do, in cases like this, have to start dealing with the possible overlap between different data types. Right? Could I have two different data types that both had, or two different enumerated types that both had Monday as an entry? Or if I see the value one, you know, is it representing, uh, is that being used, which data type is that being used for? Um, you also have to address some of the type compatibility issues if you're doing this kind of thing. We talked earlier about the idea of structural compatibility versus name compatibility. This is a good example. If I have an integer variable x and I have a weekday variable w, can I assign w to x and vice versa? Right? Is that accepted or should the compiler flag that and say, nope, that's a, a type error. You've got a type mismatch here. You can't mix integers and weekdays. So those are some of the typical issues that crop up. Again, you dealt with enumerated types, I'm assuming, in uh, at least to a limited degree, but they're certainly a valid supported type. All right, we'll move on with more data types in the next video.